Listen to Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. shortly after midnight. Somewhere in the U.S. zone of Germany, an army transport plane has taken off from a secret air base and with throttles wide open is roaring through the moonless night, roaring toward the east, toward Czechoslovakia and the Iron Curtain. Ken, you can't do it. You're signing your own death warrant. Maybe. What else can you call parachuting into Czechoslovakia, trying to work your way into the Yakimov uranium mines? Look, Chief. Johan Van was an old friend. The reports from Prague say he's been sentenced to slave labor in those mines. I ain't going to try and get him out. I know how you feel about Werner, but Ken, you're too valuable a man to throw your life away like this. No man's life is as valuable as freedom. And Johan Werner is one of the leaders of the Czech underground, one of the men who's trying to keep freedom alive. Sure he is, but they... Pilot's warning signal? Yeah. Yes, we're... Over the forest outside of Carlsbad. You won't reconsider? Sorry. Be seeing you, Chief. So long. Good luck, Ken. That's the latest glorious pronouncement from Moscow. The news. Read up the news. The news. A copy of the Cloudbard Zeitung, please. Yeah, I'm in here. The Zeitung. Thanks. Here. Danke schön, ma. This is kind you gave me, mein Herr. It has the face of Jean Masaryk on it. That's right. But these coins have all been recalled. They are forbidden by our government since Masaryk was. Since our former president died. Yes, and I understand there's still a demand for them, for um, private circulation. Well? The Grunwald Pottery Mills, 79 Zillingstrasse. Purchased from 1980 in Moravian China. Offers a coin in payment. Thanks. Thanks very much. The news, the news read of the latest great message from Moscow. Here you are, mein Herr. Our finest examples of Moravian china. And I warn you, they are very expensive. Yeah, I imagine they are, Fräulein Grunwald. Would this be enough to pay for them? Who sent you? The news vendor on the Leninstrasse. What do you wish? A way to get into the Akimov uranium mines. You wish to arrange the escape of Johann Werner. Do I? Only five of our leaders possess coins like that. Johann Werner is one of them. Also, he is imprisoned at Yakimov. So? First, we must give you a new personality. That of Hans Obdahl. Hans Obdahl. Registration cards, police permits, ration cards, everything. And then? You will go to the Hradek Mineral Bath for three days. At exactly two o'clock, you will bathe in pool number seven. Upon one of those days, somebody will contact you. How will I know when it's the right person? When you enter the Yakimov mines. <laughs> ah, it is pleasant in the mineral bars. Do you not find it so, mein Herr? Yeah, very pleasant. Yeah, yeah. One rests here, relaxes, hey, help done. You know me? <laughs> no. <laughs> we have never been introduced. I am Anton Gora, by the way. Herr yeah, Gora. But I make it a habit to inquire of the attendants as to the names of the other bathers. It always makes for an opening to a conversation. Yeah, I guess it does at that. And now that I have opened the conversation, I can bring up the subject of... Uh, the Yakim of uranium mines? What makes you think I'm interested in them? Our files, of course. By the way, I'm associated with the secret police. Yeah? Our files are most explicit in the matter of Hans Opta. 
Very interesting. Someone tipped you off? You misjudge her, my friend. Fräulein Gruenwald's intentions were of the best, but she could hardly be aware that certain members of the secret police have infiltrated the underground movement. Uh, and now what? You wish to enter the Akim of Mines, Herr Optal. I will see that your wish comes true. You may have the opportunity of spending the rest of your natural life there. <laughs> But I don't want to go behind no iron curtains, Mr. Chief. Honest, I don't. Del Schmidt, you're going into Czechoslovakia. But, Mr. Chief... Ken Thurston's been missing for four weeks. All our regular sources of information have drawn blanks. Now it's going to be up to you. But I can't find out nothing about what's going on in Czechoslovakia. Don't give me that. You've got cousins mixed up in every dirty racket in the world. You'll find plenty of them called that. Hoops? What? What was that? The pilot's warning signal. Hey, what did you open that door for? Because you're going to jump. Jump? Oh, no. You've got a parachute. Whoop. There's your signal. Jump. But, Mr. Chief. Del Schmidt. A Geronimo! Have you been in Yakimov now, Herr Obdor? Four weeks. Three days, are enough and you? I lost count. After the second year. Yeah, I get what you mean. Obdor, you have inquired at the grapevine concerning the whereabouts of a certain man here in Yakimov. I think perhaps I can help you. How? Leave your barracks two hours after dark. The third shift will be entering the mines. Join them. I can't get back into the mines, Sonoff. The guard will stop me at the checkpoint. You do not have to enter. Just this side of the checkpoint is a tool shed. In there you find the man you seek. Thurston. Ken Thurston. Oh, Ken, 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 my good friend. Oh, how glad I am to see you. How, uh, but what are you doing here in Yakimov? I came to get you out. Oh, no, no, this is sheer madness, Ken. You have given up your own life for the sake of mine. There is no possible way to escape. I've spent four weeks and three days here trying to prove otherwise, Johan. I think maybe I've succeeded. What do you mean? You have found a way? Could be. But we'll need somebody to help us. Uh, Sarnoff. Sarnoff will do anything I ask. Good. Then with luck, we'll be free in Carlsbad by tomorrow night. So, comrade Sarnoff, they expect to be free in Carlsbad by tomorrow night. That is right, comrade Gora. That is why this man, Obdo, wished to contact Berna. To assist him in his escape. Very interesting, very interesting. It proves my wisdom in giving Obdal enough rope to hang himself. <laughs> eh? Let us visit him at once. But they are desperate, comrade. They will know I am a traitor. They will kill me. You alarm yourself unduly, comrade Sarnoff. Or did I neglect to inform you that at the end of the visit, they will both be dead? We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. The United States needs the best qualified young women in our nation to do an exciting, interesting job. If you're a high school graduate between the ages of 18 and 34 with no dependents under the age of 18, you may be able to qualify for a career in the armed forces. 
If you can meet the qualifications, if you're above the average in intelligence and ability, learn the advantages of joining the armed forces now. And now act two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. A sentence of life imprisonment in the uranium mines at Yakimov, Czechoslovakia. That is the result of Ken Thurston's desperate attempt to help Johann Werner, Czech underground leader, to escape from those mines. However, they make plans to break out, not knowing that the secret police have been tipped off as to their intentions. Did you see that can guards heading for the tool shed? Yeah. Someone has tipped them off. But who could it have been? Our friend Sarnoff was the only one. Ken. Yeah, who else? Lucky we got out of that shed in time. Lucky? What difference does it make now that they know there is no longer any hope for escape? Is there any way we can get into the mine without being stopped at the checkpoint? Uh, yes. There is one, an, an old exit shaft near the tailings. Good. Let's head for it. But, Ken, what good will it do us to go into the mine? It's our only hope of getting out of it. I still do not understand. They leave the mine for the rail yards on this look for this gravity switchback. Then they made up the into freight trains and hauled into Cosbach. Oh no, no, it is no good, Ken. They search every square inch of those trains before they leave the yards. They don't empty the ore cars to search them. You mean we should bury ourselves beneath the ore? That's right. But we could be crushed to death, perhaps suffocate. What do you think will happen if Anton Goro gets his hands on us? Ah. So, Herr Zellschmidt... You have come to Carlsbad looking for a certain uh, friend of yours. Yeah, you said it, baby. So how's about coming across with information or stuff, baby? The name is Fräulein Grünwald. Oh, sure, I know. You already told me, baby. So what about this nameless friend of mine, Mr. Thurston? Hmm? What makes you believe we know anything about him at the Grünwald pottery mills? Listen, I got plenty big shot type connections in Carlsbad, see? Yeah. They tipped me off that he came to visit here with you, see? Hmm? Yeah. So you better spill plenty before I give you a couple of degrees or two. Yes, perhaps I had. Well, your friend did come here. Mm. We sent him on to the next station. <laughs> we have heard nothing from him since. Uh, that's a pretty kettle, if I ever heard one. Now, where is this next place? The Hradek Mineral Baths. Hmm? If you wish to learn about your friend, go to pool number seven. Be in the bath at two o'clock for three successive days. Oh, no, no. One of our people will contact you there. Okay, okay. No sacrifice too great, I always say. <laughs> See you later, baby. Anton Gora here. Anton, this is Ilsa. So? I have just sent a uh, visitor to the bath. His name is Terschmidt. He's looking for the other one. And listen, Anton, the other one's true name is Thurston. Thurston? The one we suspect of being the man called X? Exactly. <laughs> it has paid as well to play our little waiting game, Anton. Has it? Of course. If we had turned him over to the NKVD four weeks ago, they would have got all the credit. Now, we turn the man called o X over to Moscow. I'm certain the rewards will be most generous. I do not like to disillusion you, Ilsa. But Thurston has already made his move. Both he and Werner are missing... Missing? You fool! How could you have allowed that to happen? Why be so alarmed, Ilsa? If they do succeed in escaping from Yakimov, they must head for Carlsbad. Ah, yes, of course. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
And as I said, Anton, I'm certain the rewards from Moscow will be most generous. Slowing down, Ken. We've reached the Carlsbad Yards. Let's get off. Uh, oh, Carlsbad. I have never hoped to see it again. We're not out of the woods yet. We've got to find a safe place to hide out. Uh, then there is but one place for us to go, one person whom we can trust. You mean Ilse Grunwald? Yes. I, I do not believe it. I can hardly believe it myself, oh, Ilse. To see you free, out of the mind. Uh, oh, it is like a miracle come to pass. You can thank Ken Thurston for having brought it about. Oh, and I do thank you, Herr Thurston. Well, now, let's see. We will arrange a hiding place in the Bavarian forest. A new headquarter, headquarters from which Johann can guide the destinies of our people. I'm afraid that won't do. What? I do not understand. It is Ken's opinion that I must leave the country. Leave? Czechoslovakia? Oh, no, Johan, that is impossible. Why? Well, he he's needed here too badly to give our people strength, hope for the future. He's needed for that on the outside, too, where he won't be stymied by the secret police, where he can tell the whole world about the situation here. But, but we would have to get you safely across the border. How could it be done? Where would you go? The U.S. zone of Germany, just across the border from the town of Cheb. Cheb? There are military installations there. It is the worst possible place to attempt a cross. Not for military men, Ilsa. Get us army officer uniforms, official credentials. We take the train for Cheb, midnight tonight. Look, baby, I'm tired of taking baths all the time. What are we going to go out and paint up the town anyway? If you will do me a little favor, Pagan, I think we can have some fun tonight. Hey, now you're talking. Go to this address. A man by the name of Anton Gora will be there. Just tell him that the two packages he's looking for will be aboard a train to Cheb this very night. <laughs> So far, so good, Ken. In one hour, we will be in Cheb and make good our escape across the border. It uh, yeah, looks like it, Johan. Oh, you sound a bit doubtful, my friend. Why? I'm wondering about Ilse Grunwald. How far we can trust her. Ilse? Well, surely you are not serious. Well, she sent me to the minimal baths and Anton Goro showed up to arrest me. But she did not know that the secret police had killed our contact there, that Gora had taken his place, she explained all that. Can she explain what Gora's doing aboard this train? What? Yeah. Ah, good evening, my friends. Do you mind if I share your table with you? No, no, come out of here. Ah, thank you, thank you. Well, gentlemen, I trust you find the accommodations of our military train satisfactory. I would not wish you to be uncomfortable on your journey to Chad. Mr. X? Oh. Mr. X. It was the babbling tongue of a charmingly obnoxious aide of yours. Hey, Gonsdelschmidt. Yes, we found him most amusing. I'll bet. By the way, he has flown to Cheb with the lovely Ilsa in the mistaken belief that he will help you to escape from Czechoslovakia tonight. I am afraid the wait at the airport will be a long one for him. Yeah. So what goes now? Oh, it is quite simple, Herr Thurston. I shall see to it personally that the two of you make your way safely to the German border. You mean you will help us escape from Cheb? Oh, sure. That's where his guards will shoot us down. Ah, you realize my plan then, Mr. Thurston. It's pretty obvious. The man called X is killed wearing a Czechoslovakian army uniform ah. while helping a traitor cross the border into the United States zone. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a beautiful yarn for your propaganda machine. Exactly. You will be a cause célèbre. Proof to the entire world that your country is fostering war, spreading internal dissension and conflict within the borders of our uh, peaceful nation. Yes. There's only one thing wrong with it, Gordon. Huh? It's not going to work. Oh. All right, Johan. 
to the platform of the car. Yes, I'm with you, Ken. This way. And now what? We jump. Oh, it is no use. The whole countryside will be alerted. We will never get through the forest now. But you can't go through a wall. You've got to go over it. Come on, jump. But I don't get it, baby. You said we were going out on the town tonight. What are we doing in this Cheb airport joint? I'm waiting for word from Anton Gora as soon as his message reaches me. We, we will be able... Fräulein Gruenwald, please report to the commandant's office. Fräulein Gruenwald, report to the commandant's office at once. There. That must be Anton's message now. Wait for me here. I'll be right back. But, baby... Wait for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> How do you like that? Leaves me out here in the cold, hanging onto a couple of bags. Boy, what a time I've been having. No Mr. Thurston, no smooching, no money. Believe me, I'll be plenty glad to get back to the good old USA states. Okay, Peg, now let's go. Oh, Mr. X. Yeah, come on. But where are we going? Back to the United States. But but how? Keep walking over to that plane. We're flying out of here. Plane? That's an army job. They've got guards for those things and stuff. That's keeping off a couple of headaches in the hangar. You found him, Ken. Yeah. Get aboard, Pega. But that cute cookie, Ilza, we, we got to wait. She, she'll be right back. Oh, you bet she will. The minute she runs, we're the ones who had her page, not Gora. Huh? Get aboard. It's okay, okay. Uh, hurry, hurry, Ken. They will be on us any moment. I have already had a call from the control tower regarding our intentions. Are you there? In that place, what are you doing there? It is Gora. Yeah. Close the canopy. Stop that. You hear? Stop that. <laughs> Hold on to your hats. I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, quiet, you idiot. We're out of range. We'll be in the U.S. zone in 15 minutes. We will? Hey. <laughs> hey, how do you like that? I did it. I got you both out of Czechoslovakia. Oh, sure. Yes. Yes, we are out, Ken. And I am leaving my beloved country, perhaps forever. You'll be back. Oh, you forget. It is in the hands of dictators. My people are enslaved. Don't take my word for it, Johan. Take a look at history. And a man who once said that no nation can exist, half slave and half free. That goes for the world, too. You'll be back. <laughs> And now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Veronica Pataki, Will Wright, Lou Merrill, Harry Bartell, and Bob Griffin. Next week, an ancient Byzantine Bible and $10 million force Ken to make a dangerous voyage that parallels the one made by Noah and his ark. Fortunately, there's only one Pagan Zelschmidt aboard, played, of course, by Leon Belasco. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. The story is written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying goodnight for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.